Welcome back to another Reaper blog video. Today we're looking at Tattoo from Audio Damage, percussion synthesizer virtual instrument with built-in sequencer, and it came out back in 2009. It was a paid plugin recently made free in Audio Damage's uh, free and legacy plugin uh, list that they just recently set as free. So we're gonna have a look at this in 2022, see if this is an oldie, but a goodie. Let's jump into it. So here is the tattoo interface and I've actually zoomed in. So one of the downsides of these old plugins, they're made for smaller screen resolutions. You know, when everyone had a 720p screen and a plugin this size was large enough. On a 4K screen, this is gonna be tiny. I'm on a 1440p screen uh, and yeah, it's tiny. I need to zoom in. Up at the top, we've got our section for controls of each drum sound. In the sequencer section, we can click on any of the drum names and that will switch what's visible up at the top. Below that, we have a mod sequencer. So this is like a step se sequencing for velocity, or if we click on any of the, the knobs up in the instrument section, we can change step sequencing for each of those parameters. We can change the envelope by just dragging. So these dots, we change by dragging left and right, and we can change the curve by dragging up and down on the curve. And then in the sequencer section, this is a very standard sort of step sequencer with a 32 space grid. So instrument on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis, you just click to add in that sound. And if you wanna change the velocity, you will see that in the, uh, the mod sequencer. There's some random buttons and things like that um, as well. One of the things about these old legacy plugins they may not work as expected and there's no support for them. So this is one of those things where, you know, maybe it does something really cool, but it doesn't quite work right. Um, I'm on a Mac Big Sur with a M1 processor. I find that most things in Tattoo work well, but there's some things that are a little weird. It seems like they don't update as soon as you press a button. So especially in the sequencer section, these all respond really well, but when you're touching the velocity and you hit the random button, it doesn't always update. It doesn't seem to update until you press play. You would expect that if you click on one of the patterns, it would instantly show that pattern. But what happens is you have to start and stop playback before it goes to there. Or if it's during playback, you have to wait for it to get to the end of that sequence before it goes to the next one. I think you can get used to that. It's not a deal breaker for me. I like the sounds enough and I like the step sequencer enough. I can deal with those issues, but yeah, you know, maybe that's the deal breaker for you. Maybe that's what makes you not want to download this plugin. Right, so once we've got some notes into the sequencer, we can actually scale back the amount of our sequenced hits, kind of randomly taking some away, or with the random beats function, we can add in more beats we can choose the note size or kind of how frequently that's gonna happen and choose the velocity. So if it's on sequence, that's going to use the sequencer velocity and otherwise we can drag in here and choose a specific velocity for those random notes. So I'll do that on the kick drum and solo that. I can take away some of those notes. Randomly playing those notes from what's sequenced. or I can add in random notes on 16th note grid. And choose a specific velocity. Or put it on the sequencer and set it to random. And one thing that I think has been missing like forever is just a reset for the velocity. Yeah, uh, you got to draw in that velocity again. Kind of a pain, you know. 
oh well. So anyways, here's how it sounds. Right, and below the sequencer, there are, there's the mixer controls for level, panning, and the output. This is actually a 12 output virtual instrument. We have outputs from A to F on uh, stereo pairs. So we could have our kick on channel A, our snare on channel B, toms on, let's say C, our hi-hats on D, and the rest throughout through uh, E and F. Um, or we can have, let's say, um, the kick drum on A, but pan to the left, and the snare on A pan to the right, and get two mono outs. And then we just change what that actually links to in Reaper's Mixer, so that if something's pan to the left coming out of, of Tattoo, we just on channel one, that will come up as a stereo input on a track, and won't come out just on the left. It'll come up centered that gives you a lot of flexibility for mixing. There is very limited built-in effects in here. Um, each of the drums have different controls. So let's say the kick drum, it has a saturation control, um, but the rest is just kind of tone shaping things. Um, there's no global EQ or anything like that. There is a global compressor though, uh, which is pretty extreme, I'll, I'll say. So let's put this on uh, pattern five, a little, a little busier. Not a big fan of this compressor. It just seems to make things really loud if you have the attack um, moved away from fastest at all. Something that's also kind of curious, um, you know, maybe this is as designed, but if I solo two of the instruments, I'm only getting the kick drum or only the last one I clicked on plays. And sometimes I need to double click that solo button. I don't know, this is this is one of those weird quirks, you know, maybe that's just happening on the Mac VSTi version of this. Maybe it doesn't do that on the Windows version. Maybe it used to work a different way uh, back in 2010, but as it is right now, that's kind of a weird thing and they're not going to fix it. So you have to just live with it uh, if you find this plugin still worth downloading. Okay, so now we're moving on to the global section. There is a sync option for host, internal, and MIDI note. Internal uses uh, its internal timing, and when you press play, it plays inside the sequencer, and it's independent of your Reaper project or whatever DAW you're using. When it's on host, it waits for Reaper to play, so I'll hit spacebar. So it starts and stops with Reaper. And then MIDI note waits for a note to come in. I don't have my keyboard turned on, so I can't demonstrate that. When it's on host, the tempo control will be disabled here. Has no effect. I'll switch this to internal. Right, that makes sense. And there's a swing control. And then sequencer MIDI only, when this is red, that's not going to play the internal sounds. But that means you can connect that into some other instrument, use the sequencer as something for addictive drums or whatever virtual instrument, percussion instrument doesn't have a sequencer. And if you don't want to use the built-in one in the DAW, that can be a useful thing, especially when it has the random functions. You can program a few different patterns in here and things like that. So let's get into adjusting some of these sounds. Let's take the kick drum and we'll change the, the amp envelope and the pitch envelope.
can change the amount of pitch mod, click level, tuning, Try the hi-hat. This one has a different set of controls. Solo it. Got noise mix. Different kind of tone generators. So here's the one of the toms. Make it last for longer. We could do things like adjust the saturation amount in addition to whatever the, the setting is here. Or the noise level. Here's the open hi-hat. And now at this point, I guess I'll just go through some of the different presets available. There's a ton of them, 47 different presets here. And uh, some of them are gonna clear your pattern. Let's see if it, I still had one in the clipboard. You can get pretty interesting kind of retro sounding percussion sounds you know, vintage synths, like the, what is that? The 606, is it? 626? The mini pops sort of sounds, things like that. Like these these old retro drum machines that don't sound like real drums, but have a place in music history. Um, they can be really cool for intros and breakdowns or, or top layers, things like that. Uh, I really enjoy that kind of sound. So, that's Tattoo from Audio Damage, uh, one of those oldie but 
oldies but goodies. It's free, so may as well check it out. And that's it for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.